Good morning. Uh, first, I would like to thank Professor Irving Lasso very much, and uh, I would like to pinpoint the question which was raised a number of times yesterday. How can we bring to reality all these crucial ideas which have been exposed yesterday and which are exposed every moment in this conference, idealistic, humanistic ideas, however, the world looks different, as we all know. And I might say that we have tried over the last several years, when I was appointed research professor with a German minister called Klaus Töpfer, he was Minister of Environment of Germany and Director General of UNEP of the United Nations, and we have a research institute in Potsdam outside of Berlin for advanced sustainability studies, trying to implement these crucial ideas into political practice. It's an institute between politics and the sciences humaines and natural science, of course. There's a Nobel Prize called Carlo Rubia also joining us. And we have done a major study over the last three years on the anthropological cultural prerequisites of development and sustainability in different cultures of the world. In that case, focusing on Latin America, but not only asking what do other cultures give us as impact for questions of nature, of the supernatural, of sustainability, of development. What can industrial nations learn from other cultures, be it India, be it Latin America, with such a rich spiritual metaphysical tradition, the case of Latin America going back to the 16th century, the Catholic scholasticism, but asking what is the result for today's world. So I would like to look in these brief remarks on the changes of paradigms of development politics. And I might say I'm at present advising the German Minister for Economic Development in Germany. Uh, we have a Ministry for Economic Development, it was called Entwicklungshilfe, but this is not the term of today's world. And we are trying to include other cosmologies, other world visions from Africa, from Latin America, from Asia, into today's development politics for the future. So the kairos of our world civilization of the future is not just to touch the limits of growth, this is evident, in the sense of a pure quantitative measurement of the GNP. I just was two weeks ago at Harvard University uh, speaking to Amartya Sen, the economic Nobel Prize, but also a philosopher who, as you know, all know, has developed in the, uh, in the uh, commission of President Sarkozy with Joseph Stieglitz, also qualitative categories to measure what is development. What is the notion of progress? What is progress? So we, we, we more and more do understand that the purely quantitative measurements simply are not enough. There's education, there's the arts, there's music, there's social combination. And Amartya Zen, being a philosopher and an economist, uh, has done a substantial work on qualitative aspects in the sense of the primacy of sustainability as a guiding principle of thought and action, also with the limits of the free market and a clear perspective on an ecological and social market within the view of dignity of man in the, in the tradition of the genesis of mankind. So in the center are the anthropological, cultural, and religious prerequisites of sustainability and development, of course, in a plurality of cultures, because as we all know, the diversity, the plurality of cultures is a richness of human evolution. Biodiversity and cultural diversity always are linked. We do need a deeper understanding of this cultural dimension of development in politics and consequence, the diversity of different sustainability developments in different cultural traditions. The crucial question is a simple one. Is modernization necessarily westernization? I personally doubt it. Many others, I mean, the enlightenment of Europe, we all know, the cold fire of Voltaire, the instrumental rationality of Descartes, 
cogito or the cogito. This is the Western tradition. But what do other cultures being involved in global economy today, Islamic traditions in China, in India, in archaic Africa, how do they get along or do not get along with modern economy without having the enlightenment tradition of the European sense? And this is also important for the whole ecosystem. This means a holistic perspective, in particular for the relation between tradition and modernity is the, the kairos of our time in the diversity of cultures. Hereby, we need to overcome a purely Eurocentric world perspective. This is essential. Culture takes influence on environment, and the environment forms culture. It's always vice versa. As I once wrote, in the Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung and in Le Monde Diplomatique, it was translated in 28 languages, culture as a factor of realpolitik. And this is what it is. It is not, culture is not, it's more than folklore. Culture is not just the Salzburg Festival or the Bayreuth Festival. We need an anthropological notion of culture in the sense of realpolitik. We experience today a trigology between culture, ecology, and economic development. In the old Greek tradition, we know the word oikos. It has been mentioned yesterday already. The house as a common source. In that sense, culture is conceived as ecology and the economic perspective must be enlarged with an ecological consciousness, a multiple modernity. We, we don't have in today's world just the Western modernity. We have multiple modernities. Shmuel Eisenstadt has worked on this tremendously. And the foundation of a scientific world consciousness has to be balanced between natural sciences and the humanities. This is a crucial question. We can speak of a pluralité du monde as a sign of history of evolution of mankind. Also, for this view and the future of the world civilization. The cardinal question is modernization, necessarily westernization. Do we have in the beginning of the 21st century really only a Western modernity, not rather different modernities, according to different cultural and religious traditions? The Shinto tradition in Japan, the more archaic traditions in Africa, the Russian Orthodoxy, the great Hinduist traditions, the Confucian heritage in China, or as I mentioned, the scholastic tradition of the Catholic 16th century with a very metaphysical, spiritual worldview in Latin America versus, in the sense of Max Weber, the Calvinistic heritage with, in North America with a very empirical, logical, and analytical thought, if you just think back of pragmatism as the original voice of North American philosophy of John Dewey, William James, Pierce, uh, up back to the 19th century, North American history of ideas and values is strongly linked to this pragmatist tradition, which does not exist in other cultures. It is understandable why, for example, work ethic, innovation, and investment forms, but also the relation of nature and the supernatural is not the same in different cultures with its cosmologies. The compatibility of technology and culture is also not the same in all cultures. And we should keep in mind that technology is not neutral. Technology has to be acculturated to different traditions in religion, and otherwise it destroys human identity, as we can see in different parts of the world, not just in Islamic traditions. If you think back what happened uh, some 20 years ago in Peru, in, in Latin America, where the Shining Path uh, killed 70, 75,000 people. If you don't respect the compatibility of technology and culture, different time perspectives in Bolivia, where you have 75, 78% of the population, Ecuador as well, still indigenous Indian traditions, speaking Quechua, not, speak, not even speaking Spanish. You understand that the time perspective in that case has a kind of a prophetic past going back to Inca traditions. In consequence, the compatibility of technology and culture is simply different than in a Calvinistic culture of North or in Japan or in China. The understanding of pure material progress in the sense of GNP does not allow 
automatically progress in civilization. And this is what we need, having heard all these important notions of yesterday and the whole conference. The question is certainly to which degree the Western model of civilization can and should be applied to all cultures, societies, and economies. Don't we rather need what you might call an integral economy, an ecology politic with a holistic perspective in the sense of a real democratic humanism? In today's world, there's not a unity without the plurality of cultures and no plurality without unity. The world civilization develops towards the multiversum of a, we might call it a polylogue of cultures, and in that sense, the dialogue of cultures, civilizations, and religions is in realpolitik the question of survival of mankind. There can't be peace between states before there's peace between cultures and religions. Today, we have an interchange between cultures and spirituality and ecological sustainability. For development politics, they have tried to advise the German Minister for Economic Development strongly. In that sense, the cultural capital of a society and its economy are essential for the future of a civil society. Be it in Africa, be it in the Islamic world, in Asia, in Latin America. This is also important for the relation, I mention it, between biodiversity and cultural diversity. We do not need a special form of, we need, of, you might better say, we do need another form of wisdom. You might call it ecosophy, ecosophy, ecosophy in the Greek sense. We might speak of a spirituality of the ecological paradigms with, in a plurality, a form of life which means a link between ecology and theology also. Ecology is always linked to theology, always, which has been, just think back of Gregory Bateson, think back of Claude Lévi-Strauss, there are many examples. In that sense, we must find the balance between the te technical scientific civilization and the cultural wisdom, as it has been brought together with the analytic instrumental rationality in the sense of Descartes, I just might rem remind you of the great philosopher of religion, Raimundo Panica, to which I have been very close. He has worked on this tremendously all his life. The logics of thinking and acting in different cultures has to be understood. Also, in cultures with a not pure Western logic and rationality. Just consider Franz von Assisi with his integration of religion and the ecological sustainability in his time already, which was of highest importance and is still today to overcome what you might call a pure anthropocentrism. Also, if you think back to Indigo Lopez de Loyola, another major thinker of religion, we knew of theology of sustainability as a memory for the God of creation and as a prerequisite of really deep sustainability in life in the sense of a community. Now, this is what we need, a true sense of community. In particular, in that sense, we could speak of a spirituality of sustainability, which is based on the sacred notion of nature, which is abundant more and more through technological civilization of modernity. In addition, the biodiversity must be brought in balance what you might call with a cosmic harmony in nature. Just think, I would mention one theologian, Urs von Balthasar, who in the 20th century has already tremendously worked on this important notion of cosmic harmony. And the cosmic harmony is destroyed, modern technology. To take, to take serious global thinking today means certainly to respect other cultures, as forms of thinking and acting in an equal form in a multipolar world civilization of the starting 21st century. The pure and threatening hegemony of the instrumental, instrumentalistic rationality and a mechanistic worldview of purely material and quantitative thinking must be overcome. Also, the cold dominance of pure profit thinking. 
The real task is what you might call a rehumanization of life. We must rather be less, we must rather less modernize culture, but cultivate modernity, to put it in a simple form. We are confronted with a necessity in development politics of the future, seek for a convergence between a humanistic culture and the realm of politics, with, also with the natural sciences, but including the humanities just to overcome what you might call the fragmentalization of knowledge, which is threatening, which can not give us any solution for problems and threats of today's world. This is certainly the vital question of our time and epoch. The dialogue of cultures and civilizations asks for a new, you might call it, cosmopolitanism in the notion of dignity as an anthropological prerequisite of the human rights, confronted with purely military solutions for political conflicts, which alone are not sufficient, must, but must be balanced. I might just add that we do at present, or I'm responsible, we are doing at United Nations, uh, in the headquarters of United Nations in New York, with the Alliance of Civilization, which has 168 countries, uh, we are preparing a major conference on the notion of progress. What is progress in the diversity of cultures, which shall take place at the end of May of next year in the headquarters of the United Nations, including a number of Nobel Prize winners and heads of state. And this conference will be the academic platform, because as you know, in the September of next year, uh, the heads of state worldwide will come to New York for the post-15 millennium goals, which will be proclaimed by Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. And for the first time in history, sustainability will be mentioned as a notion in these post-millennium goals in September. And I might say that our conference in May, uniting leading scholars from Japan, the president of the Academy of Russia, and Edgar Morin, and many others, uh, from China, from India, from the president of the World Bank, James Wolfenson, and many others, Amatia Zen, uh, will, will be the academic platform to reflect what is the notion of progress. And other conferences shall be following on the notion of identity. What is identity in the technological age? The threat of ident human identity, human dignity, and last, religion. The impact of relig religions on economy, on the state, on civil society. Again, in the diversity of cultures. So this is a program of conferences which I'm doing with Deutsche Bank in Germany, with the Friedrich Ebert Foundation of the German Social Democratic Party, and it's done by the Alliance of Civilization of the United Nations in New York, starting next May of next year. The diversity of cultures to come to an end Hereby is always an enrichment of history of human evolution as a true metamorphosis of our time. The technological summit of man has, has finally not improved really human condition, but it is nothing but the Promethean character. The self-mightiness of man just throws a shadow on his finitude, but the logos is never livable without the mythos. As we know, thinking back of Karl Kereni and many others, because the instrumental ratio asks for the necessity, as it, you might call it, ask for a telluric consciousness, uniting the sort of unity of Earth with the development politics which understands ecological consciousness as a sign of the diversity of the biosphere as well as cultural diversity. And of course, the technological homogenization, uniformation, which we are witnessing in today's world from New Zealand to, 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 to Latin America, is a threat on human identity. This is evident. In that sense, we urgently need what I might simply call an anthropological consciousness for the future of world politics and as a sign of a future character. Let me come to the end by saying that the species man will enhance to reach what you might call a reservoir 
of humanity, still in the hope which only defines life, pinpointed to an always more and more uncertain future. Thank you very much.